Chapter 1, A Silly Thought. Our story begins immediately after my last video. See, I recently went to New York for the first time in my life and I tried shawarma. It was life-changing. On the flight home, our plane took a decent while to take off, so what was I to do but scroll through Zillow? It's the Instagram of responsible adults. From my brief research, I deduced that I'd have to live on the west side since majority of the fabric stores in Manhattan are on the west side. But the word lower just wasn't vibing with me, didn't sound gossip girly enough, so I set my sights on the upper west side. But was I really in a manic enough state to go through with it? I mean, the shawarma was great, don't get me wrong, it's just what would my Instagram followers think? There was only one way to find out. Guess they were having a manic episode too. <laughs> Chapter 2 picking an apartment. There were almost too many options to comprehend and each one more expensive than the last. I had to find a way to narrow down my search even more. Luckily, that's what all of you are for. That's right, I'm using you. How do you feel about that? By the way, I picked a brownstone building because 95% of you said I should pick a brownstone building and the other 5% of you have about as much taste as an Avix. By the way, an Avix is the people in the Hunger Games who have their tongues cut out. I assume they have no sense of taste. Upon finding the perfect apartment, I began talks with a broker. I had never heard that word before, but I can assume why they're called that. There's a joke about how expensive apartments are and they make you broke. Anyway, it was so confusing that Gary and emancipated himself from me just to get away from the phone call. The broker told me I was pretty. Then she told me that it wasn't a compliment. Now listen, I've bought a house or two in my day and holy smokes, it was way more complicated to rent. I'd rather go through the work of buying five houses than renting one Manhattan apartment. I asked about my credit score. They wanted my license, taste stubs, letters of employment. Like, you think I have a job? Chapter 3. Making and buying things for the hypothetical apartment that as of yet, I had no idea I'd actually get. This battery-operated projector was a must, as I couldn't decide where I wanted my TV to be. Did I want to watch it from my couch, my bedroom, the bathtub? This way, I didn't have to choose. And who knows, maybe I could even play a movie on the subway. For my next project, I got two of these end tables. They were as drab and plain as me without makeup, but they were only $7. So I figured, like my face, I could take this from a 5 to a solid 8.5. I did so by priming and painting it, then projecting my desired art onto the top. Around the time I was painting and tracing it, I received the impossible great news that by some miracle, my application for the apartment was accepted. To celebrate, I ate the chocolate lava cake that Grandpa JJ's been meaning to make me since I hit 2 million subscribers. 2 million, baby! Then I called my friend Stephanie, who lives in New York. Let her know that we're moving to New York! No, not me. Just me here. <laughs> oh, wait. I FaceTime Micah. Whoops. That was an accident. I dropped my phone and called you. How you doing? Uh, okay. I'm sorry. I love you. Bye. Hello. I got an apartment! No way. Right next to Central Park. <laughs> Never been to New York in my life, and then I go there. I'm like, hmm. They never should move there. Wow, that's so soon. Stephanie, there are no shawarma places in this city. No. You did not decide to move here for the shawarma. You don't understand. <laughs> Wait, we do? <laughs> no, Courtney's telling me they serve shawarma somewhere in this I'm city. I just sure. got an apartment for nothing. Yay! And now a tiny sneak peek of my life in New York, as well as a word from our sponsor, Threda. Hey, kid. You want to buy a watch? I mean, look at my dress. ThreadUp is the internet's largest consignment thrift store, but more importantly, the source of 77% of all the clothes now in my closet. They sell items that are gently used and sometimes brand new, like these shoes that were so new I have to pay my friend to break them in for me. Or this little number, originally $32, but the ThreadUp price was just $14.99. And the brand is Shein. But remember, you can wear that without being cancelled so long as it's thrifted. Because I understand, you want a clean conscience, but that brand does have some cute butt pieces that will make everyone, even the cops, wave at you. ThreadUp has looks suitable for everything, from Central Park to the Garment District to the financial district. Or if you just live in the Midwest, they have outfits you can totally wear to Kroger or Steak and Shake, like this sassy, whimsical exhilaration dress. It makes me feel like a cute Manhattan rom-com protagonist. Originally $24.99, but of course I paid only $9. And you know, ThreadUp isn't some shallow company that only cares about selling you clothes. They also sell accessories, like this unbranded purse, originally $64, but obvi, I didn't pay that. I paid $12.99. ThreadUp also cares about the environment, and they do a lot to protect it, unlike those out-of-touch high-end business people. Am I right? Those business people sure do know how to dress, though. Business. So every once in a while, I go for a boss babe look, like this Zara dress, originally $45.99, but the ThreadUp price, only $20.99. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If boss babe isn't your aesthetic, though, ThreadUp has some easier, breezier, hot girl summer looks for you to choose from, like this black Zara top, originally $48 but I paid only $11.99. And these whimsical Zara shorts, originally $36, but I paid just $10.99. This outfit is perfect for strolling the Upper West Side in search of treasures that rich people throw away because they don't feel like taking the time to donate them to an online consignment thrift store. You're not like them, though. You shop Threda, and you do so by following the link in my description and using the code Makara for 40% off your first order. That's right, 40. On top of all that, I'm super excited to announce that I've partnered with Threda to curate, yeah, curator over here, a collection, meaning I spent hours upon hours, carefully and excitedly, 
we're picking out the perfect items for a collection that you all get to shop. It is inspired by spring and summer in Manhattan, so there's some things very central parky, fashion districty, soho y, outfits with a little professional flair, and I would wear every single piece in that collection. So that being said, you better act fast because within a few days, I'm gonna get on there and I'm gonna buy some of the things I like. It would mean a ton to me if you check it out. So now I'm going to the bank to get some checks made out and for the first month's rent, safety deposit, broker's fee, whatever that is, and a bajillion other things that they want. So much money this is the outfit. I'm wearing a blazer so they know I'm in business. I'm wearing this shirt so that they know I'm a legitimate, authentic New Yorker. And I'm wearing my brother's lucky tooth so that I can feel like he's there with me. Or you could just have me go with you. Um. So on the windiest day in our galaxy's history, literally I saw a girl get knocked over by the wind in the middle of the street. It was awesome. I set out for the bank like the strong, independent boss babe that I am. Now I'm covering my face here because all the paperwork of the past few days gave me major bags under my eyes. But the point is we went to the bank. It was awesome. I freaking love the ladies that work at my bank. They always make my day. I love you guys more than appropriately. Just kidding. It's very appropriate. I don't know why I said that. I'm like equally obsessed with everyone who works at my dentist office and my orthodontist office. Dang, why am I leaving the city? Everyone here is so nice. Oh, I forgot the face. Now my brother Micah, who was recovering from his concussion at my house, let me turn my lights on for the first time in three days to help me paint this table. While doing so, we reminisced about this time when we were little and our mom spent the whole week in a hospital getting a hysterectomy and suddenly it occurred to us neither of us knew why she got a hysterectomy was it for some medical reason or was i just so ugly as a baby that she never wanted to risk it again we needed the answer my self-esteem hung in the balance half the time when i call mom she's in the drive through or when she calls you Whoa. how you doing <laughs> not good i'm on my 58th bucket of water that i'm dumping out of the basement right, that's, that's stink that makes our question seem less pressing what's your question why did you get a hysterectomy because my uterus had fallen down into my was falling out of my body oh like my rat yeah. That's what happened to Theodosia Burr, too. With my self-esteem restored, I ventured to my mother's to help her dump 47 more buckets of water out of the basement. Upon returning, I found Micah still adding details to my art. Twerk. No. I think it's worth noting that this was my brother Micah's first time painting in his whole stinking life, and he was already way better at it than me. He's got kind of an eternal chin. You know what an Ouroboros is. No. It's a snake eating itself. No, Ouroboros is the thing in the sky. Oh, in Iceland. Aurora. Oh, no, you're thinking of Blue Lagoon. You're talking about Ouroboros. Oh, no, you're talking about... This lampshade was in my donation. Pile. But like everything else in my donation pile, I took it back out of the donation pile. Convinced I could somehow redeem it. I did go to the donation store though, where an employee man tried to convince me to buy this broken table for $20 and I did. I had a little That's So Raven moment where I saw this broken table rise like a phoenix from the ashes and become my custom sewing desk. So I slapped some wheels onto the bottom of the legs, then went shopping for wood slash lumber. Fun fact, on the west coast people typically call it wood or lumber, while on the east coast people typically refer to it as wood or lumber. Now if you're doubting my capability, and thinking I didn't make the whole thing, my dad probably helped, you might be a sexist. Hey, make it look like you made the whole thing. Or maybe you're just really good at assuming things correctly. But I will have you know, I carried my weight on this thing. I designed it. I saw it a lot. I screwed, drilled a lot. And I say this next part at the risk of you unsubscribing to me, but I measured a lot. I measured a lot of things. We spent the better part of a day working on this desk, then took a break to get some dinner at this post-apocalyptic themed steak and shake. The next day, after we painted it, I added some spicy little touches that would make this desk truly custom. I got a couple magnet strips for my bobbins and cut them so they'd fit perfectly into this little crevice, or crev crevasse? Croissant? I don't know, I'm so bad at Spanish. Garion insisted on taking us out for coffee. Then I routed out a cutting track, which is something I have always dreamed of having. And while I'm not a huge fan of measuring, I traced a yardstick onto my desk so that people who watch my future sewing videos will have some point of reference. Then I put a heavy duty magnet on the bottom of the front leaf of my table so that I'd have somewhere to put my scissors. Next, my dad and I mixed up a lethal dose of epoxy resin. This would keep the numbers from fading off the top, ensured the cutting track would stay nice and smooth, as well as ensure that any future blood stains could be easily cleaned up. And of course, we afforded the same protections to my end tables. That night I went out to eat, and my cousin happened to see me driving and followed me all the way to the restaurant. She's definitely my favorite stalker. Hey Shelby, are you subscribed to me yet? One time she was subscribed to Jake Paul and not me. You got a chip on your shoulder. No, I've forgiven you. <laughs> oh. Chapter 7, The Ottoman. Did I film your reaction to the coolest piece of furniture I've ever bought? Yeah. Action. Come in. Oh, Shelby, how unexpected. <laughs> Need a place to sit? Sure. Well, luckily for you, my footrest doubles as a... Oh. Chair. What's that? I got some heart issues. Yeah. Feet need elevated? Yep. Is that good enough or do you need to... I need to talk about my feelings. Well, that's okay because this doubles as a... Psychiatrist's bed. <laughs> What's that? You want to spend the night at my house? Yeah. <laughs> it's a bed. <laughs> But wait, there's more. There's there's more. more. It also doubles as a TV screen. Whoa. So you can watch all my YouTube videos on it. Which is the only thing you would watch, right? 
Just me, not Jake Paul. While showing the ottoman to Shelby was satisfying, I ventured to think I could get an even better reaction from Francis. Oh, come in. Oh wait, it's New York, I have to buzz you. <laughs> My footstool is awesome. A chair. I walked here. Oh, so your feet are tired? Very. <laughs> no way. Right, and what's that? I'm so tired. You wanna talk about your feelings? Yes. A psychiatrist chair. What? I, I don't think I can walk all the way back today. <laughs> Good night. Oh, and did I mention it has pockets? This ottoman is literally, oh my goodness, I can't tell you how great this ottoman makes me feel. And while I forgot to film it, my mom and stepdad were equally amazed by the ottoman. Also, I feel legally obligated to inform you that this is a bad angle of both of them. Mom's lower body is not that big and Sunny's forehead is not actually that big. I also showed my friend Janessa the same day we went dress shopping. Wanna see her wedding dress? There it is. Courtney also had an okay reaction to the ottoman, but it probably would have been more enthusiastic if she wasn't so preoccupied by all the pain she was in. Should I be packing? Yes. Should I be preparing? Yeah. Should I be working considering I'm about to move to the most expensive city in America? Sure. But there are more important matters at play right now. It's currently the evening of March 30th. It's currently the evening of March 31st. And you know what that means. <laughs> I'm about to embark on a momentous, potentially cruel journey, but it's a big job, and I don't know if I can do it alone, but I can't trust anyone who I can trust, because everyone who I trust is going to be a victim. So I asked a neighbor who doesn't know anyone I know if he can come help. What is he? I think he has a mask on. It was actually a medieval knight helmet. It's about 11.35 p.m. We're about to begin Operation Hash and Dash, or Operation Mother Clucker for the R-rated crowd. So here's our exit strategy. I grab the ducks, take them in my car. Did I say ducks? I can edit it. <laughs> grab the ducks. Chickens. Ducks. Put them in my car. Hope that they don't stick it up. Transplant them into JJ's floor. But before heading to JJ's, there were a few final touches to add. We'll do this more often, okay? Phase one of Operation Cluck and Duck is complete. Now we move on to phase two, the scramble. There's about to be some foul play. That was exhilarating. Briefly terrifying. I didn't vlog a portion of it because, listen, on the way from my house to my dad's house, no cops, not a single one. On the way from my dad's house to JJ's, aka where when I had all the chickens in the back, cop at every stop, just staked out. Headlights on, facing the road, waiting for someone to pull over. And I'm not exactly driving a stealth mobile, okay? So I'm looking at my current scenario and I'm like, if I get pulled over, how am I gonna explain this? How, what am I gonna do? What is my strategy to not look like I'm up to no good? So I took my beanie off. That was fine then. Dang, it smells bad. Hey guys, just dropping in to let you know, I wrote a song today. I've been working on it for the past like 15 seconds. It's based on a true story and I think it might be kind of special. I don't know, you tell me. Today, I stuck my pinky in my ear, pulled it out and it was covered in blood and I said, that's not supposed to be here. It's not even a joke though. I've been bleeding from so many places lately. <laughs> like, so many places. I don't even care. Like genuinely, like I don't mind and I don't know why I don't mind, but I don't. Blood's never really bothered me. Animal blood does. Like human blood is literally what we are. The ingredients to you and me is blood. Oh, oh, my eyes are... Okay, I'm back. She is not vlogging. This is kind of fun. It's like a nice little getting ready, getting not ready. I just realized something. So recently, my friend was trying on wedding dresses and while she was in the dressing room, the dress attendant got to talking. We had a lot in common. We had a few things in common. We both like Harley Quinn. And she asked if I wanted to get unready with her sometime. I didn't know what that meant exactly. Didn't know that was a thing. But now it's dawning on me. Maybe this is what that is. I hope this is what she meant. You know, like that, not. <gasps> Your morning. Interesting. I'll get me with a spray. Thing in the toilet I saw. I went to go upstairs and the water tumbled down off the door, but it didn't get me. And then the ice cream spray. Now, fun little case study on psychology here. I was putting off asking about the chickens because I assumed he just hadn't noticed they were gone yet and I didn't want to ruin the joke. Meanwhile, my dad was putting off bringing up the chickens because he thought I would be heartbroken that they were gone. So there we both sat, making small talk awkwardly while avoiding the topic that was occupying both our minds until finally my dad brought it up and I responded with, well, deceit, really. You didn't happen to move the chickens, did you? Funny. 
Seriously. Are you joking? Was it a little deceitful? Do I feel kind of bad? Yeah, but there's only one day of the year where the Ten Commandments are sort of gray area, so I decided to take full advantage. This is not an April Fool's. I looked all over my house, front porch, in the RV, basement, upstairs, in the playhouse, my car, obviously. I spent probably half an hour walking around and driving around the neighborhood. Is there at Jay Days? Extra <laughs> I'm sure you're wondering, don't your friends and family expect it from you by now? My thoughts exactly. Which is why I had to do a decoy prank, so that the Markleys would know I didn't forget about them. They'd see Courtney's car wrapped in saran wrap and think, oh, that was the April Fool's joke. When really, they were now feeding four extra chickens and had no idea. And when I say they had no idea, the chickens were in their house for like three days. I wish I could show you all the juicy reactions to all the pranks, but I was not there when any of them were uncovered. Yeah, that's right. I did all this knowing I wouldn't even get to witness the fruits of my labor. I'm pretty sure there's like a Bible verse that explains what a good person that makes Anyway, me. on April 3rd or 4th, we went back to JJ's house to take back what was ours. And I I honestly think it was a really good experience for them because like none of them were laying eggs before we took them to JJ's and since we brought them back they lay like every day. And just in case they didn't have a great time, I gave them a generous consolation prize. Now because that prank didn't satisfy me quite as much as it could have, considering JJ didn't even notice that he had four extra chickens until I basically gave it away to him, I decided to set sail on one last April Fool's hurrah. So I came up with the best April Fool's joke, my grand finale. I'm gonna give myself a really horrible haircut. And then everybody will be like, oh, we know her. First week of April, probably a week. But the real joke is that it's gonna be real. Let's just... I, I think that's pretty good. Let's... There. I'm just gonna keep this for a few days. Do we love it? Perfect. So my friend Josh, he's outside working on his car. I'm gonna show him a haircut. Nice. Kind of a lackluster response, but that's okay. I can't expect him to be Shelby or Francis. Oh. What? Whoa. No way. My dad had a pretty enthusiastic reaction though. You know, depending on what dictionary you look up the word enthusiastic in. No, no, no. It's okay, but it's like long in some spots and short in others. If you're happy, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be offensive. April Fool's. <laughs> you didn't catch her here? No. How do you make it look like that? I did But April Fool's, I'm not offended. Well, that was weird. Let's see what Courtney says. The text concerned her to the point where she showed up at my house with scissors. But I refused her kind gesture because I wanted to spend a few days with this haircut. Then I struggled to remember what the, um, like, what the joke was, why I was doing- I couldn't remember why I was doing this. Uh, April Fool's, I didn't really cut my hair. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an illusion. It's the way I'm holding my head. It makes oh. you think I cut it. Oh, yeah, yeah. See? Well, that was also weird and underwhelming, so I went to my mom's house. Mom? Like it? Uh, yeah. To cut off one more in non-April Fool's related news, I asked my mom to try and figure out why my ear was bleeding and she confirmed that it was in fact because it was bleeding. After a few days, I did indeed let Courtney even up my hair since I had to get late Christmas card pictures taken with my mom and Sonny. But the short hair has been great. It dries really fast. By the way, if your arms tire really quickly, the fastest and easiest way to dry your hair is by laying on a vent. What will she think of next? You know. Next, I made the dress from the most recent Barbie trailer, got a few pics and videos of that, and finally it was time for chapter seven, moving to New York. This is all the stuff I want to take with me to my apartment in New York. I was planning on putting it all in my RV, but then someone stole the catalytic converter to my RV. We don't know who. That same night, somebody left a bouquet of flowers on my porch and we never found out who, so it might be the same person. If that's you, thanks. So anyway, we gotta fit all of this in there. Dad, do you think we can? It is currently about 11 p.m. My dad and I are leaving at 3 a.m. He went home to sleep. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna stay up because that's when I usually go to bed anyway. I am dressed appropriately for the occasion. There's not there inch to be had. Moving montage. On the drive, the topic of umbrellas inevitably came up. I was about to tell my dad a story that coincided with the topic. I decided to film this endeavor because you have the right to know absolutely everything about my personal life. Once upon a time, I worked retail, then I stopped working retail because I became a YouTuber. That's not the story. The story is I'm still part of the group chat and I enjoy it. I like seeing, you know, them all talk to each other, share schedules. I'm a little peeping, no, not peeping Tom, ew. Little fly on the wall. Anyway, one of these days, they mentioned that there was a man outside the store. They said he was a homeless man who was loitering and somebody said, oh yeah, so-and-so just called the cops on him. And I was like, I was ha just happened to be on that side of town and I know what it's like to have the cops called on you because I have a few times. Mind you, I've never committed a crime. 
by my standards, but I've had the cops called on me and it's always very humiliating. So I was like, I'm gonna go warn that guy before the cops get there. So I drove up to him and I was like, hey, just wanted to let you know that someone called the cops on you. Do you wanna ride somewhere? And he said, no, but do you have some cash? I was like, I just have $10, do you want it? And he said, no. He was like, but do you have an umbrella? And I was like, no, but the place next door might have an umbrella. You could take the $10 and get an umbrella. And he said, oh no, no, thank you. And I was like, do you want me to go next door and get you an umbrella? And he's like, no, I only wanted an umbrella if it was yours. <laughs> and he said, don't worry your pretty little head about me, Barbie. Because you know, my car says Barbie on it. He was very nice though. And he's like, I'm quite comfortable right here. And then I left and I don't know what happened after that. I should clarify. I don't even know if he was experiencing homelessness. That's just what someone in the group chat said. Other important facet of the story. It wasn't raining and it wasn't super hot out either. It was just like a really normal day. And he was under an awning. I don't know what he was going to use the umbrella for. Maybe some Mary Poppins-esque sort of stuff. <laughs> I've been enjoying Manhattan. The fabric stores are really easy to get to if I just walk south on Amsterdam Avenue or take a subway or a horse or my dad's car when he visits. I've been in this apartment for a while now and I think I'll do a lot of cool things here. So I'm sure you have some burning questions and I'm just gonna answer them right now. One, what are you gonna do with this house? I'm not selling it. I'll still be living here half of the time. However, this house holds a lot of really painful memories for me now. It's definitely not an environment that is conducive to creative thought blooming. So my current plan is to spend two weeks at a time in New York being inspired, working hard, and then two weeks at home being with my parents and my friends. But if we're being honest, I'm just heading back to Ohio to do laundry every couple weeks because let's face it, do you really think I could figure out how to use a laundry mat? And Garyan. Yeah, he's probably your next question, right? What will happen with him? Well, Garyan will be staying here in Ohio because if you haven't noticed, he's really close to my dad. His favorite word is pawpaw. I'm not allowed to have pets at the apartment and also, also, if he was in New York, who would watch him while I was in Ohio? So, much as it pains me, there will be some separation from him. He's not taking it well. The lease is for a whole year, but I might only stay a few months then sublet it and hopefully make enough money to save up to buy a mansion and rent this house out to one of you. I don't know. I might hate living in New York. I hope I hate living in New York. It's really expensive. Oh, you're probably asking when you can see the apartment. Well, not today. <laughs> Stay tuned, unless you're watching this like a couple weeks from now, in which case it's probably, you can probably watch it. I've always wanted to do a cliffhanger. Uh. This street is basically an Ikea. Oh, don't forget to follow the link in my description and check out the thread out. When you do, use my code Makara and you'll get 40% off your first order. I might have figured my ankle. <laughs>